Let me start by saying this. Saying that a win is a win is generally not something I say. Because generally, it's not saying anything. It's usually just one of those things that people say when they don't actually have anything to say. A win is a win. Bam! That's some insight. A win is a win. Water is wet. In the case of Raider Nation this morning, I actually think that's what everybody needs to hear. Because that's all the Raiders really needed last night. And they needed it badly. And they got it. A win. They got it done. So, and the reason I'm directing this at Raider Nation and Raider fan is, no, that was not a pretty game. No, Jimmy G did not exactly set the world on fire. And I had a moment or two where I thought, how did they let that guy out of protocol? He obviously should not be out of protocol. Not with that decision. And yes, Josh McDaniels was trending after the game and it was not because the X was full of praise. And by the way, the X is rarely full of praise. The X was the same, in fact, as it generally is. Full of people getting high on haterade. First, they lost to the Chargers, their bitter, hated rival. On top of that, Josh Jacobs, one of their stars, went off about how he's sick and tired of losing. Respect. I respect him giving it 100, keeping it 100. That does get old. Never a great sign. Never a great sign when one of your star players says, hey, man, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of busting my ass and working hard every day and having nothing to show for it. Not a good sign. My man, Josh, he needed this win. And look, I'm not saying that Josh coached a perfect game or anything close to it. No, his decision to try a 52-yard field goal with two minutes left instead of going for a fourth and one that would have basically slammed the door shut. Yeah, that decision was not statistically, by the book, the correct call. The numbers say you go for it. The book says you go for it. Analytics say you go for it. In fact, the Next Gen Stats tweeted that it was the quote, this is amazing, quote, most suboptimal call of the season, end of quote. That according to the numbers, which is pretty hard to believe because there have been some seriously, outrageously suboptimal coaching decisions this season. Ask any Charger fan. But you know what would be even more suboptimal than that field goal decision? Losing the game. What I'm saying is anyone caught up on that decision is missing the point. Point being the total off the rails disaster that people were expecting from the Raiders last night didn't actually happen. That was not the product that the Raiders put on the field last night. An actual football team showed up and they won a pretty big game. And they actually did make some plays. They actually did show some heart and some effort. They actually made a few heady plays, including, and this is the most counterintuitive thing ever, but including the most brilliant horse collar ever. I'm not sure that anybody's ever called a horse collar heady, but Marcus Peters had a really heady horse collar. That epic chase down of Christian Watson saved a touchdown and ultimately saved the game for the Raiders with that penalty. I mean, how funny is that? The same dude, and this is even funnier because he is the same dude. The same dude who made headlines for liking social media content, calling for the head coach's job last week. That guy. That guy saved the game with a horse collar. Now, I'm not sure that Marcus Peters was thinking to himself, hey, man, I better horse collar this dude because he's going to score. I think he was just trying to stop him from scoring. But the penalty prevented the score, which saved the game, which is pretty incredible. And it's the same guy that was liking social media content, calling for his coach's head. Hey, but then again, if you're going to show up and make heady hustle plays to save ball games, I don't really think Josh is sweating what the dude liked on Instagram. In fact, Josh straight up praised the dude and the play after the game because deep down Josh may think or know that that heady horse caller did save his job or give yourself a chance to actually coach a few more days. <laughs> you got to admit, that's such a hilarious line. 
I'm not sure I've ever heard a coach talk about a heady horse collar or heard a coach praise a horse collar penalty. But Josh is right. It was the right penalty. It was a really smart play and also a really high effort play for a dude who was liking posts calling for Josh's head last week. I mean, if he were a bad guy and really had that in him, he might be thinking to himself, for who, for what? If I make this play, that might save my coach's job. But he was all out. And while I'm shouting out effort plays, let me also shout out the always outrageous effort of that absolute psycho coming off the edge whose motor never, ever stops. This dude is an absolute maniac. The Condor, Mad Max. I cannot tell you how much I admire this guy. His prep, his work ethic, his grind, his engine, his motor, his relentlessness. This dude is incredible. And no, I'm not basing that on last night, just generally. What an unbelievable story this guy is. He's an unstoppable force. He's a phenomenon. He's Max freaking Crosby. He also leads off the field. Check out his act after the game, hyping up the defense for coming up as big as it did. This dude can say whatever the hell he wants. I mean, he is a superstar. He is a superstar. He is a monster. He's an alpha. Every time that guy plays, if you watch him, not to go coach speak on you, but he jumps off the film. He is criminally underrated. He's not only one of the most underrated guys in that league, I think Max Crosby is one of the most underrated humans walking around the planet. I love this guy. I I think he is an absolute animal in the best way possible. And he's got a point. There is a lot of noise. Now, understandably, there is a lot of noise, but there is a lot of noise. But that defense came up huge, huge last night because as it has been all year, the offense was the opposite of huge last night. The offense was anemic last night. The offense was practically worthless. They still haven't scored 20 points in a game this year. Of course, the game came down to a defensive play. But incredibly, a defensive play, and this should tell you all you need to know about the Raiders and the Packers, or something about those two teams, a defensive play that was a jump ball in the end zone before a 5 foot 8 inch, between a 5 foot 8 inch Amik Robertson and a 6 foot 4 Christian Watson. And somehow the little dude comes down with it. Somehow, despite giving away an absurd eight inches to Watson, Robertson rises up and snatches that Jordan Love throw and the dub away from the Packers. And I'm here to say, not to make it personal and not to have it impact this take at all, just sidebar, it's going to be a hell of a long time before I bet money on Jordan Love again, frankly, frankly. So once again, it wasn't pretty, but the effort was there. The big plays were there. It was enough to win the game. The Raiders still haven't scored 20. That's a real problem. And I know how frustrating that is. But they got enough to get by last night. And now they're rewarded with the upcoming schedule. Take a look at it, Raider fan. Pats, Bears, Lions, Giants, Jets. Lions aside, there are a bunch of extremely winnable games coming up. I'm not saying you're a playoff team. I'm not saying you're a contender. I'm saying winning last night keeps things interesting. Because they've got basically the bottom of the league lined up for them. Now, on to you, Wisco fan, quickly. Rough game, rough loss. Definitely, quote, suboptimal. Now, I would, I would say that Jordan Love's performance was below suboptimal. That was his worst game to date. It was his worst game to date. Now, let me say this about Love. I'm not saying that I expected this guy to step in and be Aaron Rodgers. Although some of you Packer fans who hate Aaron incredibly and stupidly thought that you'd be better off with Love than Rodgers. You did. Own that. I never thought that. I thought only that both sides, the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, needed a change. 
They would benefit from a change. But I never thought that Love would step in and be better than Rogers or be Rogers or be anywhere near that neighborhood. That's fine. I didn't expect that. Rogers was arguably the best player in Packer history. But let me say this. I'll tell you what I did expect. I did expect Jordan Love to step in and do more and be more than he's doing. More than the occasional flash. Because he's not doing a hell of a lot. And last night, he pretty much did nothing at all. Be careful what you wish for, Packer fan, because this is exactly what most of you wish for. Rough night for the Pack. Much better night for the Raiders. But the bowl cut still seemed pretty red-assed in his box. Mark Davis had a seat that was not immediately on top of the fans, but something still clearly aggravated him to the point where he went super viral yet again. Lip readers interpreted him saying, what a bleep hole. Now, I wonder what the hell they were screaming about. Josh McDaniels this time. I don't know what it was. Maybe him going for that field goal late. Now, when they got up in the cuts, the bowl cuts face last week with that, he told them, smarten up. Smarten up. Smarten up. Smarten up. This time, for once, bowl cut could have just yelled, scoreboard, scoreboard, pointed at the scoreboard. Smarten up. Hey, one more thing about next-gen stats and things being suboptimal. Let me relay this in a way that you clones can understand. What if we had jungle Next gen stats. What if we had next gen stats in the studio and we based every single choice and decision that we make on this show based on that? It would not go well for you clones. For instance, if we asked next gen stats if we should go to the phones, next gen would tell me that that would be the most suboptimal call of the season. Taking even one call would be the most suboptimal call of the season. Same with your tweets, same with your emails, suboptimal. Taking a phone call, say, from Parody Larry is the equivalent to running a tush push on 4th and 20. Give me back my start. It'd be like punting on first and goal. It'd be like taking the snap and running backwards to your own end zone. It would be worse than suboptimal Titanic suboptimal. And probably still too soon for that. Definitely a suboptimal night for the pack. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell to be the first to know when we do upload a new video.